Almost every night in Jamaica, music booms from the inner city until daylight. It's Wednesday night at the Pasa Pasa Dance Hall in one of Kingston's most notorious ghettos. The block-style club draws partygoers from all levels of Jamaican society. But many Jamaicans are outraged by the dance hall genre of music. Earlier this year, murderous and sexually explicit lyrics were banned from the Jamaican airwaves in the name of protecting children. <laughs> I think that should have banned it because it got way out of hand. There are some people who actually do the action. People get influenced different ways. Me personally, it doesn't make me want to have sex. It's just a song. The reason they don't want it to be played, they're trying to avoid this whole subject topic of sex. It's really an issue of class and power, being framed under the facade of, you know, we're losing our young people and um, it's destroying the nation. Um, an analogy for you is Elvis Presley doing stuff with his hips, you know, back in the day and people think, there goes the United States. For Dr. Kingsley Ragashanti Stewart, a professor of anthropology and a popular radio DJ, Dancehall music has become the focus of a cultural war that is revealing the lines that divide Jamaican society. There are people who write me from Botswana, South Africa. They want DVDs of Israel. But you have to understand, dancehall is from the working class, poor ghetto areas of Jamaica. Now, there are those here who are uncomfortable with the popularity of this space representing Jamaica. They're offended by it. Personally, I would be totally embarrassed for anybody to associate me with some of the songs that are written in the name of some of the dance hall culture, the, 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 the violence and the crudeness and the crude sexuality. I am not, that is not my culture. I do not embrace it and I reject it. Esther Tyson, the principal at a parochial high school, is one of Jamaica's most outspoken critics of explicit dance hall music. Earlier this year, she wrote a column that appeared in one of Jamaica's national newspapers denouncing this song, Rampin' Shop, as damaging the morals and values of the society. The moral foundation that we had in previous generations, that, that is being eroded. Music has, it's one of the greatest influences in Jamaica. So in my mind, if the music can influence us in such a negative way, can you imagine if it is turned around and the lyrics are positive lyrics, the impact that that will have on the psyche of our nation? Supporters of Dancehall believe the ban was less about censoring graphic images and lyrics and more about the battle between Jamaica's upper and lower classes. Grace Hamilton, known as Spice, is a prominent Jamaican dancehall artist. Her sexually explicit song led to the nationwide ban on broadcasting the most graphic dancehall music. And we say, coming at the ramping shop, they have a problem just because we say it in Patois or Jamaican dialogue. So that is what was causing the problem. Everybody was like, oh, this is unfair. They're fighting dancehall. They're fighting our own roots and our own culture because we come from the ghetto or the inner city and they don't want to see we, you know, step up to their level. They want to split Jamaica into two different halves. Like any other country, we have a history, and that history is steeped in a plantation past where you have a white uh, kind of Victorian aesthetic that's supposed to be the most appropriate way of being. And this was um, diametrically opposed to an African aesthetic in terms of the slave, which is the heathen, the, the ungodly, and the, the uncultured, and the people who need to learn to be decent. Some people describe it as having two tribes. We have an English tribe and we have a Creole tribe and these tribes operate differently. Karen Carpenter is a sexologist studying culture and sexual behavior in Jamaica. She believes that the music ban reflects long-standing social divisions between rich and poor, known in Jamaica as uptown and downtown. The uptown person is, is usually an English speaker, could be a speaker of Jamaican as well, but will speak in English most of the times. Is someone who lives in an area that is a residential area, where you can't play loud music at night and parties must end at a certain time and the police do come when you call. And sex is not a topic of polite conversation. Downtown is what we call chaka chaka, it means disorderly, disorganized, untidy. You live in the industrial areas or the business area and you are likely not to have um, much privacy. You speak quote unquote badly, it means you speak patwa. Downtown you're allowed to express yourself sexually. Downtown you are a sexual being. Out of broadcast and commissioner.
They would never get dance or to stop talking about sex because again you know from a class perspective there's a fundamental different way sex is discussed amongst dancehall people and amongst the so-called elite dancehall has gone uptown now dancehall was once exclusively downtown a lot of uptown kids a lot of uptown people they love dancehall for an island that is renowned worldwide for its music for better or worse this is what jamaica sounds like and dancehall music, while controversial, may be the place where these two Jamaicas meet. Believe it or not, dancehall is the only space that people from these really radically different backgrounds come together. For World Focus, I'm Lisa Biajati in Kingston, Jamaica.